On November 22nd, 1963, President John Fitzgerald Kennedy was assassinated in an open-top limousine while passing in a motorcade through downtown Dallas, Texas. The shock and impact of the events, along with the photographs, film, and media of the tragic day, have become ingrained in the psyche of the country ever since. While President Kennedy's story ended on that day 58 years ago, the presidential limousine story did not. Here it is displayed at the incredible Henry Ford Museum in Dearborn, Michigan, lined up in a corridor between President Eisenhower's bubble top and the presidential limo Reagan was pushed into during the 1981 assassination attempt. This is the 1961 Lincoln Continental Convertible that President John F. Kennedy was assassinated in. Though it definitely looks different than it did on November 22nd, 1963, it's hardly recognizable as the same car. The presidential limousine, codenamed X-100 by the Secret Service, was built and altered in 1961 and began service that year, so President Kennedy safely rode in it many times. But on November 22nd, 1963, this limo was used in Dallas, and President Kennedy was shot twice in this rear passenger seat. He was assassinated sitting right there, and the First Lady was seated right next to him. Texas Governor John Connolly and his wife were seated in the middle seats. Of course, Governor Connolly was hit as well, but he survived. After the shooting in Dealey Plaza, this limo rushed to Parkland Memorial Hospital, where the President died about 30 minutes later. After the assassination, the limousine was impounded by the FBI as evidence. After that, the Secret Service decided the car would be altered and continue service as a presidential limousine since these were very expensive to make. Even though a president had been killed in this one, a quick fix plan to revamp and test the car was begun in December of 1963 and was completed in June of 1964 when it continued service. The initial alterations and updates that largely produced the car's current appearance cost half a million dollars. The rear passenger section of the limo was significantly rearmored to withstand even sniper firepower. That included very thick bulletproof glass. Additionally, this non-removable top was added on, so it would no longer be an open-air limo. They also added these handles on the rear of the vehicle, so that the Secret Service could hold onto the back if need be. This is where Secret Service agent Clint Hill leaped onto the back of the car to try and shield Jackie and the President for more shots, but by then, a chunk of Kennedy's head was apparently splattered on here. The car underwent more enhancements in 1967. One of the more interesting changes was a small glass roof piece that can't really be seen from this angle, but it was installed so that Nixon could stand outside during parades, from the same seat where one of his rivals was killed. This limousine was officially used by Presidents Lyndon B. Johnson, Richard Nixon, Gerald Ford, and even Jimmy Carter before it was officially retired in 1977. I believe it was given to the Henry Ford Museum because the Ford Motor Company built the car and participated in a lot of the restorations. So despite all the changes, this is fundamentally the limo in which John F. Kennedy was assassinated. One of the most consequential vehicles in world history, and as this museum puts it, an icon of change. While the car is here at the Henry Ford Museum, there are many other relics from November 22nd dispersed at various museums and archives across the country. Unfortunately, some of the most important ones are locked away at the National Archives in Maryland. I really hope those can be released during my lifetime. But there is also an unbelievable JFK collection at Historic Auto Attractions in Roscoe, Illinois. They have a replica car that is fitted to the appearance of the presidential Lincoln Continental Convertible. So this is what the car was actually like, and there are wax figures of John and Jackie Kennedy as they appeared. But behind this car is the real, unaltered Secret Service car that was following the presidential limousine on that fateful day. This car has not been changed, so unlike the presidential vehicle, this one maintains its exact appearance from the day nearly 60 years ago now. This is a really incredible relic. I'd say it's just as impressive as the actual car, because this one is in its original condition. This is the car in which Agent Clint Hill was stationed, and from which he ran up and jumped onto the backside of the presidential limo. Also at this museum, they have two sections of the authentic upholstery from the limo seats, which are stained with Kennedy's blood. The original upholstery was removed by the FBI when the car was impounded, and I guess Kennedy's secretary, Evelyn Lincoln, got a hold of quite a few of them. Her collection makes up the bulk of this collection. And here is the scissor jack that was stored in the X-100 limo, 
It was also removed during the evidence impound. So that is also authentic from the car. They also have an original negative taken by the FBI during that time of the super bloody back seat. Historic Auto Attractions is one of the most underrated museums in the country. The entire collection in that place is just fantastic. I did make a four part series on that museum, so I will link the JFK exhibit video in the description if you would like to see that. And one more thing, the Gettysburg Museum of History in Gettysburg, Pennsylvania also has a fantastic JFK collection, also mostly from the original Evelyn Lincoln collection. They also have two authentic bloodstained pieces of the original upholstery from the backseat of the limo. They also have the handle from Abraham Zapruder's camera, and the 8mm film box from which the film was used to produce the infamous Zapruder film. Probably the most analyzed piece of film ever. This museum, in the entire town of Gettysburg, is a place that I really want to get back to to make videos, because I have a lot of ideas for that. So that was the history behind one of the most notorious vehicles in world history. And yes, I did recently visit the Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village. The Henry Ford is undoubtedly one of the greatest, if not the greatest attraction in the United States. I went there once before I started making videos, and for a long time it has topped the list of projects I want to do on this channel. So I am very excited to announce that there will be a major video series on the Henry Ford Museum and Greenfield Village coming to this channel. Eventually. Unfortunately, they will not be out for a while because the chronology of this channel is delayed and there are lots of other adventures to show first, as I can only work so fast. But it is coming, so make sure to stay tuned to the channel by subscribing and clicking the notification bell. Also consider liking and sharing the video, it helps me out a lot. If you're interested, you could also check out my arsenal of other videos, including videos filmed at John F. Kennedy's gravesite at Arlington, the funeral locations in DC, and the JFK Library in Boston and I do plan on hitting some more JFK sites in the future. Additionally, I have filmed hundreds of other videos on interesting historic sites and museums, including presidential sites, so if you're interested, check some of those out. Thanks for watching. What kind of a peace do I mean, and what kind of a peace do we seek? Not a Pax Americana, enforced on the world by American weapons of war. Not the peace of the grave, or the security of the slave. I am talking about genuine peace, the kind of peace that makes life on earth worth living, the kind of peace that enables men and nations to grow and to hope and build a better life for their children. Not merely peace for Americans, but peace for all men and women. Too many of us think it is impossible, but that is a dangerous, defeatist belief. It leads to the conclusion that war is inevitable, that mankind is doomed that we are gripped by forces we cannot control. We need not accept that view. Our problems are man-made. Therefore, they can be solved by man. And man can be as big as he wants. No problem of human destiny is beyond human beings. Man's reason and spirit have often solved the seemingly unsolvable. And we believe they can do it again.